that person will have cleaned the church, okay? So we used to do those kind of arrangements uh, in camel drift and so on. But the problem is this. It cannot be that because you are a lady, you must give towards the cleaning of the church. I mean, like, really, that is another oppression. Eh? Can I get an amen from all men in this church? Yes. Yeah, yes. So, so it's like it's a punishment that you are a lady. Now you must give a money every month just for cleaning because you are a lady. It doesn't work that way. I, for one, I don't believe in that principle because the Bible says you must give willingly. But once it becomes a monthly installment, it's no longer willingness. There, it is a necessity. If you read the Bible, Bambata, but Bambata, you read the right scripture. Eh? Please, they must put it back there. Bambata scripture there, uh, Second Corinthians nine verse seven. So you don't give. So once we start making you give every month, I mean, we need to understand that some other people, uh, to them, one fifty is nothing. But to some of us, it's a, it's a lot of money. To give it every month. You know, I did metric uh, in the Jimmy in one high school there by the villages. But I know that uh, 150 multiplied by 12 is already more than 1,000. So 1,000 rand every, for, for a year because you are a lady. Now, I'm not saying we are not going to give towards cleaning. Don't get me wrong. But we are not going to say the giving towards cleaning is for ladies. That is not right. So what we will do is, you give tithe again, and you give offerings. So from that tithe and offering, we will pay for the cleaning. If that is not enough, I will take a special offering. Don't worry, I'm very good at doing that. I'll take a special offering. I will take, I'll bring a basket, and then I will say, let's receive the offering for paying the person who cleans, okay? But also in terms of passion, just as other people are passionate about mics, about iPads, and about, about lights, some bodas lights, and so on. So if you feel touched that you feel that you are passionate about cleaning, and you feel that you want to give towards cleaning, you can give towards cleaning. We don't have a problem. Even if you want to cover the, the salary of the cleaning person, if the Lord is telling you we have zero problem, but it must be the Lord telling you. That is how we are going to do church going forward. Will you clap hands for Jesus? Clap hands for Jesus. So, no more giving monthly as ladies because we are ladies who must give towards cleaning. You must do it because you want to do it. And those of us, if you are a man and you feel the Lord is saying you must give uh, and pay the cleaner, like I pay, I pay the helper at home. I mean, it's a, the, so it will not be a different thing if today I decide I'm going to pay the salary for the cleaner because I pay the salary of the helper at home. So it's not a new thing. Just that it happened until and it's an example that when we are at church, the paying of the cleaner is the wife's uh, responsibility. And then when we are at home, it's your responsibility. Let's correct that. Yes. Don't worry, I'm still anointed. I'm just saying it out of the anointing. So, so, so please, uh, all ladies, pastor is not saying don't give towards cleaning. When you feel led and touched to do so, and you can afford to do so, please do so. The work of the Lord was never meant to be a burden to anyone. And it will not be a burden to anyone. And then lastly, of course, we're doing this because we are committed to excellence. So let's make sure that we do that. From the 3rd of October, we have our project or ops meeting every Sunday at 10 past nine so those that are part of the teams that work on sunday that is the worship team if you forgot that is the worship team the media team the host team the teachers the leaders by virtue of being a leader you are part of the people that must be at church at 10 past nine we were in the lockdown now the lockdown is over so we are we are starting from Third of, third of when, Melo? Third of October. Yeah, third of October. So that we can plan the service and go through the service before everyone is here. It's not that you have done wrong. You've been doing it very well. 
but it's just for us to go through it again and make sure that we have a proper uh, service. A week of fasting and prayer, Brother JB, I sing for you, please, the mic, eh? as I believe. Week of fasting and prayer is from 4 October to 8 October. 4 to 8 October. I will tell you which days I will be praying here in church. I might be praying every day because it's the first fasting since we dedicated, okay? Uh, Melo, you got it? A uh, pastor will, will be praying in church every day. And miss Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we are praying here. And the pastor prays nicer when there's music, but he's not at home, so he can't press music on the computer. You get it? So the worship team must also be here, and everyone is invited to also come join in prayer so that we can soak this place with the atmosphere of prayer. So the week of fasting and prayer is when 4 to 8 October, we're going to be meeting here at church every day from 6 until 7. Uh, Buddy Bambata, you got it? From 6 until 7. So that's basically that. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that today we're going to learn your word. Bless each one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome all of you. Have I welcomed you? Or I just went straight to the cleaning? Okay, very welcome. We're glad that you could join us. Let's look at the anchor scriptures for the next six weeks. It's the first two scriptures, Mona, Luke 18 and Luke 11, verse 1. Luke 18, verse 1, Luke 11, verse 1. We're going to read more scriptures, but... So the Lord, yeah, yeah, okay. You must clap hands for Lissidi as well. Eh? He said he's upgrading me. So when I do a title, he's going to put something nice on the background. So just clap hands for him. Even though he's in Cape Town, just clap hands for him. So he's trying to upgrade me. So I don't know whether this is building a solid prayer life, but that's what we're talking about. Amen. So let's put the scripture there. Then he spoke a parable to them. By the way, the he there, it's not Musa Mabasa because he was not there when the Bible was written. And it's not Peter and it's not John. It's Jesus. So we can read it this way. Then Jesus spoke the parable to them. The them there, it is not the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the sins. And then Jesus spoke. No, 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 not, not just earth, but men always. Men what? Always. What is always? It is always. Yeah, I don't know. I have done English fifth language, but always it is always. Men ought to always do what? Pray and not lose heart. <laughs> he doesn't say that men ought to watch TV always. Now, we are not against the watching of the TV, and we are not against the eating of the food, but he's not talking about eating the food always. He says, men ought to do what? To always pray. They always ought to pray. Maybe put it in a nice English, because uh, they, they say New King James must be very difficult, but it means that there is no, no choice. You have no choice. It's a must. That's what he's trying to say, that man must always play. Then he told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So if there's something that you should be doing always, it's not driving the car, it is praying. If there's something a Christian should be doing always, it is not what.
has no problem getting us busy as long as we are not busy praying. Yes. Yeah. So in this series, the Lord wants you to change your level of prayer. Yes. What, what any prayer level you are in, if you are praying for two hours, the Lord wants you to pray three hours. We'll go there. But you must pray in your heart and say, it's either Jesus is my Lord and Savior or he's not. But if it's your Lord and Savior, he says you must always pray. But you look more informed about the news of this world than praying. You have no problem giving eight hours at work because it's going, the God mammon is going to pay you. I also work, so they pay me at the end of the month, so I give them eight hours every day. But how much more about God who gives you life? Well, we are in the theme of arising and building. And the Lord said to me, I must teach you how to build a solid prayer life. I must leave the building of the careers to career coaches and other experts. The building of the money to the financial experts. If you want to know how to build your money, go to financial coaches. I will not tell you from this pulpit. But the Lord has taught me to say, I must tell you that you ought to pray always. And never give up. <laughs> so it means that giving up, it's easy when you are praying. That's, he wouldn't tell you if it wasn't easy. So if you are praying, giving up is easy. It's easy to give up on praying than to give up on food. I'm just telling you script, the truth of the matter. It's easier to give up on praying than to give up on food. It's easier to give up on praying than to give up on soccer, even if your team gets chosen. I, I, I just apologize. But, but you will still think they will win next time, so you still go and watch. But as for prayer, hey, as for prayer, you don't want to do it. As for prayer, you don't want to do it. And some of the things the devil has anointed. It does not respond to prayer. No, 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 no. Come down. Come down. If you understood what prayer is, you will have an understanding that everything is by prayer and nothing without prayer. So, you see, me, I grew up an orphan. It means that I didn't have father, I didn't have a mother. But that forced me to have a strong relationship with God. Yes. A very strong relationship with God. You can't shake it. I've seen God. I've seen him like life. See him life. Even when I was in varsity, Metron Gale said, you are going out of rest next week, this Friday. I said, don't worry, we'll talk to God. What you don't know is that when you were growing up, your parents used to tell you when there's no food, we are going to pray. Yeah. And then someone brought food. But you are too smart for prayer. But we will see by where your children end, whether your smartness is better than prayer. What happened to praying about everything? So Jesus says, man ought to pray and never give up. Now, one of the things the church doesn't do is praying. Christians don't pray. And because they don't pray, they don't have power. I'll show you now. I'll show you. Let's go to the next scripture. So, so it's going to be very easy for you and I to lose heart when we pray. I want to preach don't think that when you pray, you won't fall asleep. Don't think that when you are starting to pray, a nice phone call won't come. And you say, I can't ignore this one. They have never called me. Ha, let me take it. It's going to work that way. Yes. That's why Jesus said, 
that you ought to pray and never give up. Because you can easily give up on a prayer from a phone call from your boss. Me, I ignore. I ignore. I ignore. I ignore. No, no, that's a true, true story. I just ignore. I'll call you back after prayer. Until everyone knows, seven to half past seven, I'm praying. Now it's a general knowledge. No, there cannot be an emergency that is more agent than prayer. There cannot be any emergency. If I see you are calling me Melo, I immediately am praying. I say, Father, I'm also praying for Melo who's calling me now when I'm praying. Whatever emergency he's having, may you intervene in his life and make sure that you deal with that urgent thing while I'm busy talking to you. I mean, why is it that when you are in a board meeting, can I go there? Yeah. Yeah. You don't answer your phone. But when you are talking to God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, you think that he's less important than your boss and less important than your CEO. So you say, God, please hold. I'm talking to my wife. Ah. It's a general knowledge that if you are in a job interview, you don't answer a phone. But the one that gives you life, the one that sustains you, the one that gives you life, you, you don't have a problem to putting him on hold. It's, good in it's Jesus teaching his disciples. I haven't said anything that is my own. I, will, um, I might do it, but I never do it from the pulpit. So I have not said anything that is my own. Let's go to the next verse. Maybe the next one will be very nice. Luke 11 verse 1. These are the two verses that the series is based on. These are the two verses that anchor this series. What does he say? Now it came to pass that as he was praying. <laughs> who was praying? Jesus. I mean if Jesus is son of God. You know, sometimes you must read the Bible and pause and calm down and say, get over your MBAs, get over your smartness, get over your money, get over your everything, and just calm down and say, if Jesus, the son of the Lord, was praying, who is Musama Vasano to pray? I must be bigger than Jesus, I'm telling you. For me to think that my life can be sustained without prayer. And yet Jesus, the son of the living God, even though he came down as God, he still knew that to operate on earth and be able to operate above an earthly level, you need to pray. Oh, get over yourself and begin to pray. That when he was praying in a certain place, so he, he's not praying in his heart, he's praying in a certain place. Because there are those Barcelonists that think prayer is praying in the heart. Next time I'm going to sit with you for two hours and I'm going to be talking to you from my heart. And I want to see if you're going to like it. No, no, God is listening to the heart. He's looking at the heart. Yeah, he's looking at the heart, but he wants to hear you say, you do not have because you don't ask. And when you ask, you ask amiss. You ask from the heart. No, I'm meditating. You are only allowed to meditate if you are meditating on the word of God. That's what Joshua 1.8 says. Any other meditation, if it's not in the word of God, it's not prayer. But the problem is that we grew up in church. And yet, we began to normalize prayer. So when he was praying in a certain place, where are you praying? Do you have a place where you pray? Do you have a certain place where you pray? What happens when he was done? When he ceased, that's when he said, Amen. One of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So they saw that this guy is praying, but they don't know how to pray. 
So they are trying to motivate that be a good pastor like Pastor John and teach us how to pray. I wonder if you were the disciples, when he finished praying, what were you going to ask him? Lord, give me money as you are the son of the living God. Lord, give me power as you are son of the living God. The disciples were very smart. They realized that his secret is prayer. So what does that mean? It means that prayer can be taught. It mean, and if it can be taught, it can be learned. So don't worry. Whatever level of prayer you are in, when we finish, you will be at a higher level of prayer. Will you just say amen wherever you are? When we finish, you will be at a higher level of prayer because prayer can be taught. So the best decision I want us to make for ourselves and for our children and for our children's children is to pray. Jesus prayed for the church. He prayed for the church, John 17. He prayed for the church. So he prayed for me. Why can't you pray for your grandchildren? Why can't you pray for your children? Why can't you model the life of your children in prayer? No amount of teaching, even if you take them to, you know, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes. You know, you don't know what your children are exposed to when they are in these uh, expensive private schools. There are also drug lords there. Yeah, I'm telling you. So you must pray. You cannot always watch over your children, but God can always watch over them. Sometimes if your husband is a problematic husband, I'm using that one because it's most likely that the problematic might be that side, but it's just an example. If your husband is a problematic husband, Instead of shouting and telling, he will not listen to you. What makes you think that he will change and listen to you today? I mean, you have been shouting for the last three years. I want to give you a tip. You need to go to God who holds the heart of a king and can move it around and turn it around and begin to pray and say, I'm praying for my husband. He is a problem and his problem is one, two, three. Okay, if you the wife is also a problem, you also do the same. If your child is a problem, you also do the same. But what I can tell you is that no amount of shouting you can ever do will change your husband. I mean, if the guy is a womanizer, it doesn't matter what you do. He will keep on doing wrong things. So rather you stand and pray. If the child is taking drugs or doing something that you don't like, rather pray and say by the power of prayer, I break the yoke, I break the yoke, I break the yoke and break it every day in prayer and watch God change it. Even when your boss doesn't like you. Yes. No amount of political talking. Ah, oh, but Menier, we are not fair. We are all the same. No, leave the Menier. Take him to the highest court, the judge of the whole earth. And pray for him every day. I know what I'm talking about. Pray for him every day. Pray for him every day. And you see, the heart will change. I mean, you're already not like a You're a black guy. What do you expect me to like? I, I generally don't like people who are black like you. It's just my, in my natural instinct, I'm more inclined to like a mellow because mellow is like me, you know. But you are not like me, so I don't naturally like you. No, he's a racist. No, he's not a racist. He's just living out the values that he was taught. You want to politic. You want to spend three hours convincing people that this one doesn't like you, this one doesn't like you. When are you going to convince God? When are you going to tell God and say, God, hey, this thing is not nice. I don't like it. Will you change it for me? 
But the devil has us busy with all things, but not praying. Yeah, no, not prayer, you know. If you say all night prayer, hey, yo, yo. All night prayer. Is it? Do you know the whole night and the whole night praying? Yes, I'll show you when we go to praying long prayers. That Jesus prayed the whole night. But for, for now, I won't touch it. But I mean, you are watching a money haste all night. Why, why can't you watch prayer all night and pray all night? You, 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 you busy watching soccer all night. But, but as for praying, you can't pray all, my, all night. Because the devil knows that if he, let me give you a definition of prayer. And then we'll look at five blessedness of prayer and close. What is prayer? So, prayer is a spiritual channel that connects for connecting with the help from above. Write that down. Prayer is a spiritual channel for connecting with the help from above. You don't get a connection from above. Mona, you can put Hebrews 4. Is it Hebrews 4? Just put it there. Hebrews 4. So you cannot want to operate. You don't connect to the power from above by crying. Unless it's crying in prayer. You don't, you don't, you don't connect to the power from above by complaining unless it's the prayer of petition, which is a prayer of complaining. You don't birth things by thinking about them. I have not, I'm not, anyway, me, I'm only committed to preaching the gospel. You don't think good things and you think good things will come. You need to pray. The prayer, it connects you to the power from above. Since therefore it remains that some must enter, let's, 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 verse, verse 16, verse 16, verse 16, verse 16, Hebrews 4, 16. Hebrews 4, 16. To be, write this down while they are looking for the verse. To be prayerless is to be helpless. Because help can only come from above. And we have already established that you can only get help through prayer. That's how you connect. So to be prayerless is to be helpless. How helpless are you? Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of what? Of need. So when you pray, you connect to the frequency of obtaining help when you need it. So when do I pray? I pray when I need help. When do you need help? I need help every day. So whatever you need help in, you must learn to pray. Because when you pray, you connect to that frequency. So therefore, any Christian that is prayerless is a helpless Christian. I don't know what to do. I can tell you what to do. Pray. I don't know which way I should go. I can tell you which way to go. Go down the way of the knees and begin to pray. Pastor, do you pray about everything? Yes, every single thing. When they stole the instruments, I only came in here on the altar and prayed and I walked away. Because I was helpless. What am I going to do? I'm going to sit here and cry. Is my crying going to bring the instruments back? No. Am I going to blame the, the government? Oh, the crime is too high. Ah, it's because of the unemployment. Uh, they, it's an inside job. Oh, it's going. What happened to us? They don't like us. They stole from me. The devil doesn't like us. No, 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 no. Why don't you just report him to God? So if you have a matter in your life, that no one can help you. I can tell you what you need to do. You need to pray. Uh, I don't pray that they must pay me at month end. I mean, that would be a foolish prayer. You know, because I'm working, I have a contract, they're going to pay me. On the payday, they will pay me. But because now I've moved above the frequency, okay? But if I don't have a job, I must pray that I must get a job. 
Yes. Now, no one must tell you, no, you have a degree, just apply. No, it's not application. I can tell you unemployment is very high. Yeah, very high. Do you think the people who are not working don't have qualifications? They have better ones than you. Do you think they don't have connections? They have better ones than you. So you rather pray. Part of the reason why you sometimes, you know, if you pray, ne, God will send you help. But it won't send you help unless you pray. Prayer is not a gift. It's a choice. Mm. Prayer. I'm, I'm just giving you definitions, okay? Prayer is not a gift. It's a choice. Oh, me, I have a gift of prayer. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a choice. It's a personal choice you must make. No, Mfundisi is gifted. Mfundisi is the Mfundisi. So the Mfundisi is called. So the Mfundisi also comes with the gift of praying. No, 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 no. Make no mistake. There are days where I don't want to wake up. And then I wake up at five and pray. She knows it. I don't want to wake up. But it's time for prayer. The alarm tells me that now I must pray. There are times when I'm praying and I fall asleep in the presence of the Lord. And I said, Lord, I'm falling asleep in your presence. I'm going to see holy dreams. And I wake up and I pray. But it's a choice. So do you fall asleep in Fundisi when you are praying? Yeah, sometimes I fall asleep when I'm praying. But I still, when I realize that I was sleeping, and then I wake up, I say, come at -ra -ra -ra, and continue to pray. Because it's a choice. It's a choice. It's not a gift. No Christian has a gift of prayer. You must develop the ability to pray. Even when you don't like it. Let me see. Romans. 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 It's not in my notes. Romans. I think it's Romans 8. Go to Romans 8. Look at verse. Just give me verse 20. Is it 28? I think it's verse 28. Look at Romans. 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 I want to show you in scripture, just, just put the, put, put verse uh, 31, is it 31? Put 31, just look at something there. But while you are looking at it, uh, put 26, it says, we do not know how we ought to pray. Listen to me, I know you think I'm clever, but I do not know, here. Yeah, 26, Likewise, the Spirit helps in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to. If they fire me, what, what must I pray? I must say, thank God they fired me. No, I won't say that. I don't know how I am supposed to pray. But then the spirit helps us. You'll come to a point in your life, even when you don't know how you are supposed to pray, I want to beg you, pray. And the spirit will help you. Will make intercession, will help you. Because prayer is a choice. Prayer it's a convenient requirement. It's a must. I've already read that verse for you. Prayer is a spiritual weapon in the hand of a believer. Amen. Ephesians 6, 12. Amen. You don't win fights by posting on Facebook or by motivating. No matter, there are some people, no matter, in, as soon as you enter the room, they have already made up their mind that as for you, they will not help you. Yes. They have already made up the, their mind that this one, the job is not for her. They just don't like you. And they say, I don't know, but there's this thing, my God, it's a demonic God. 
So that's why you must always remove, rebuke these demonic gods and say, any God that does not like me, hey, any God that does not like me, I rebuke it. I mean, you have the best proposal, but they just say, I don't know, I can't, I can't get it. I cannot, I cannot say it, but something is wrong. No, I rebuke you. Something is wrong with you, and we make every wrong a right in the name of Jesus. I, I'll tell you, Esther prayed, Esther prayed. Do you know that you can fast for favor? Esther called the whole nation to fast for favor. I'll, I'll talk about it maybe in the week of fasting. She said, we are fasting for one thing, that this king, when I appear, may I be favored. You see, you, you are appearing before kings and every time you depend on your ability and you think you have done well, the next guy got the same qualification, got 96% average. When I average is 50%, what makes you think that they will like you? You must say, I'm appearing and I'm appearing at the wrong time and I'm appearing with those that are better than me, but I'm praying that that may I be received with favor. May I be favored. May I be favored. May I be favored. Life is spiritual. More spiritual than you think. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against powers. Against rulers. Rulers of darkness of this age. Against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. You know when I read that. The, the Holy Spirit said come down. This is not the wickedness of earthly level. Wickedness in heavenly places. I said, God, what are you saying? It's the highest form of wickedness. Yeah. In heavenly places. Not talking, you, 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 you are worried about witches. You are worried about, no, there's more wickedness than you can ever think. And if you are going to defend wickedness, you must pray. It's not wickedness on earth. You know, I can deal with wickedness in Centurion. I can deal with wickedness on earth. We can take each other to court and then I will pray that the judge will be fair. But wickedness in heavenly places. Sickness. That you run for the test. And no one can pick up what is wrong. You go for the specialist, they say they are educated the specialists. They say, we don't know what is wrong with you. That is a sign that this is a wickedness of the heavenly places. And the moment that happens, child of God, hear me and hear me well as your pastor. Say this kind of wickedness, the doctor. You have wickedness of human beings you can deal with at the human level. But what do you do when you are dealing with wickedness against spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places? That there should be a reason enough for you to pray. Some wickedness I can't explain. When I'm on the road, yes, whether you are driving top of the range, low of the range, whatever range you are driving, don't have confidence in that range. There's wickedness on the road. Revelation says there's a black horse. Calls it the, the horse of death. One day I will teach you. Says that birds, wickedness of birds, birds of this earth, gathering men to fight against each other. Revelations. So, whenever you get to the car, you must pray. I beg you by the message of God. You must pray because you don't know what wickedness awaits you.
She's dealing with wickedness. In heavenly places. All of a sudden, your boss does, doesn't like you. But he's the one who hired you. Why did he hire you in the first place if he doesn't like you? He hired you because he liked you. He believed in you. But something entered into his heart. And the same guy that liked you now, he doesn't like you. And he wants to fire you. To just pray and say, Father, I rebuke that wickedness in the name of Jesus. I continue. Teaching you on prayer. Prayer does not change God. It changes the one praying. God, you can't change. But you can change yourself. It changes things. Prayer doesn't change God. And it doesn't change God. It changes you. And it changes things. So if you want things to change. You must pray. If you want to change. You must pray. Because every change of level. Requires prayer. If you want things to change in your life, you must pray. If you want to change, you must pray. Doesn't change God. God remains the same. So don't fast because you want to change God. And don't pray because you want to change God. You must pray because you want to change. And you want to change things in your life. I've already said this. Prayer is a spiritual weapon. That invokes divine intervention in any situation in your life. Paul and Silas, they prayed and God intervened. Elijah prayed and God intervened. Daniel prayed. Maybe let's go to Daniel. Daniel prayed. I'll talk about him later on. But let's go to Daniel. Daniel prayed and God intervened. Mona, just give us Daniel 6.22. Maybe verse 10. Start with 10 and then go to verse 22. I want to make a point. As the spirit leads me. I'll talk about Daniel later on. Now when Daniel knew. That it was written. Let's read together. One, two, three. Let's read. Just to help you with the interpretation of why he opened the door, the windows towards Jerusalem, is because when Solomon dedicated the temple, he made a prayer and he said, If anyone prays in this sanctuary and pray in any direction facing the temple, you must hear their prayer. That's the reason why he made that prayer. But he was a prime minister. Hmm? How busy can you be than a prime minister? Yeah. And yet he prayed how many times? Three times. Are you a prime minister? How many times are you praying a day? Don't, don't answer the pastor. You don't have to answer me. I know you're busy, but are you busy like a prime minister? Are you busy like the president? Hey, the president was praying three times a day. And you are just Musa Mabasa, the employee. You are not even the employer. And yet, you can pray three times a day, Musa. Oh, Musa, I'm busy. Oh, God, I'm busy. God, I understand, man. Nine hours I'm at work. Four hours I'm, dri I'm driving. And then I must be with the family. And then I must also sleep. Uh, you know, God, I'll see you on weekends. Eh? I'll see you on weekends. And yet a prime minister prayed. How many times? Three times a day. Now, I I I'm going to deal with praying. Uh, long prayers and praying always. But I want you to really think. And say, are you really busy? Or you are just too busy to be helpless? Because to be too busy to pray is to be too busy to be helpless. 
So let's look at verse 22. Verse 22. Give me 22. Just doing introduction. I'm here next week. I'm going to continue. Verse 22. I want to show you a principle God is saying. So look at this guy praying three times a day. I wonder if it works. I wonder if it works. It's now in the lion's den. Where is your prayer now? Where is your God? They are asking him as they put him there. They say, where is your God? You are getting into the lion's den. Let's read verse 22. My God. One, two, three. Let's read. Mona, are you able to put verse 10 and verse 22 together? Are you able to do that? Go back to verse 10. Go back to verse 10. He prays three times a day. And as a result of prayer, his God sends angels to help him in the den of lions so that the angel will hold the mouth of the lion so that the lion does not hurt him because he was found innocent before God. But when was he found innocent before God? When he prayed. When he made his case before God. And God began to have mercy upon him. There are lions that no human intervention can stop them from eating you. Can stop them from eating your career. Can stop them from destroying your marriage. There are lions that no human intervention. No matter how much money you have, these lions, they don't get stopped by money. Hey, I know you say Fagamalu Uzobona, but the lions, they don't wanna when there is money. Melo, you can come. Makata Moyo liar. The lions, they don't stop by anything else. But prayer. Three times a day. And the Lord stopped the lions. He sent an angel to help him to stop the lions. You don't know. What wants to hurt you? You don't know what wants to hurt your marriage. What wants to hurt your career. Some people, they flourish in talking down about you behind your back. Whether they call it succession planning or whatever. But they just have a business of when everyone is saying Musa is ready. Their job is to say Musa is not ready. But I need you to go down on your knees and say there are some lions that my money cannot defend me. There are some lions that my money, my job, my fame cannot defend me. But God, will you send your angels? Will you send your angels? Will you send your angels? And the Bible says he survived lions. Not because he was not chowable by lions. But he survived lions because God. God helped him out because God helped him out in prayer. Put Psalm 60 verse 11. I'm going to close. I'm going to continue next week. Psalm 60 verse 11, Mona. Sorry to disorganize you. Kamataraya. Maka asikitamai. Give us help from trouble. For the help of man is useless. Kamataraya. Go back to Daniel 6, verse 22. Give us help, Lord. We are in trouble. And the help of money is useless. And the help of any other human being is useless. That is a good enough reason for you and I to pray. 
no one was gonna no human being was gonna go into the lion's den because there human help was useless in the lion's den men don't get in there but angelic help God sent angels and the angels hold the mouth of the lion and said we are not going to kill them go back to Psalm 60 Mona. I apologize Amaya Sikamatanaya Lakamatoloya stand on your feet we are going to pray La manda la kamatoloya, la kamatola la la la, libra so kamatoloya. Our prayer is easy today. Give us help, Lord, from trouble, for the human help is useless. We are praying that God will help us. Kamatola ya, kamanda la kamatola ya. Begin to pray wherever you are and say, Give us help, Lord. We are in trouble and human help is useless. Give us help, Lord. We are in trouble and human help is useless. Human help is useless. Come on, 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 come just raise your hand, just raise your hand. We're, we're going to raise the, the, the strong anointing in this place. Listen to me, this is the right time to tell God that human help is useless. You see, sometimes you need to say, God, human help is just useless. Come out, Lord, Lord, raise that atmosphere. Come out, Lord, 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 come out, Lord. Some of them they can't have children, Lord. No human being can give them children. Some of them, Lord, come out, Lord, 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 They need a miracle in their lives. Come out, Lord, Lord, Lord. By the altar of prayer, we are altering everything. We are praying, Lord. Come out, Lord. Yes, it may be so. 
financial troubles. Some are in marital troubles. Some are in health troubles and whatever troubles we are in. And it doesn't matter into trouble or oh, it is by our choices and decisions we made oh, God, God, is that we are in trouble and this kind of trouble we are in human help is useless human help is useless human help is useless no one can help us out no one can bail us out but you we therefore cry and say sign up Lord sign up Lord sign up Lord sign up Lord sign up sign up Lord angelic help and any other sort of help when Peter was in jail and what he was arrested for no one could help him out the church prayed and God sent an angel to break him out of that prison. I'm praying for you today. Whatever prison you are in, whatever trouble you are in, by virtue of prayer, may God Almighty help you. May God send help. May God give you grace to help in time of need. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. I bless you. Have a great week. May God bless you. May God help you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless. See you next week. God bless you.